Hello and welcome. I'd like to now start by introducing you to some of the acupressure points that we can actually utilize mainly in the management of allergic rhinitis. There are a number of points, effective points, that can actually be used. Now these points I actually use on myself on a daily basis, particularly leading up to the time when I'm going to have allergic rhinitis, particularly hay fever. So these are points that you can either use on yourself or you can actually use to treat other patients that you may well have with that particular condition. Quite easy points to use but very effective potent points and as it demonstrates within traditional Chinese medicine your strongest points are on your hands, lower part of your leg and also on your face and that's where you're going to find the most effective points. You don't. Key thing to remember, make sure that when you are actually treating you do both sides and not just the one side um, and it will help to clear the na nose and also to clear the nasal. So if we start with the first point and that's going to what you call yin tang, it's right in the middle of the eyebrows. So here you just find your yin tang and what you're mainly going to do is just use finger pressure and you're just going to press into there and stimulate, do small circulatory motion. Now ideally is to do it for at least a minute um, onto that point which is quite good and once you've actually done that point you can then start to come down so what you're going to do is find the bridge of your nose and start to work your way down until you just come to the end of the bone and you'll feel once you come to the end of the bone and these are what you call extra points here and you're just going to stimulate into those points now once you start to do this you'll start if you have got blocked those you'll probably start to feel it starting to clear so you could do both sides or you could do one side at a time. Then once you've actually spent a minute stimulating those ones, what you're going to do is to come parallel with the end of your nose. And again, you're going to start to stimulate that one for a minute. This is large intestine 20. Okay, so these ones will help clear your sinuses, clear your nasal. And you can stimulate that one. Uh, do the same again for a minute. Now once you've done that, where your nose starts to curve under, just at the end of that curve, is going to be your large intestine 19. And again, you can stimulate that one for a minute. Okay, those of you who's actually applying uh, needling, again you can needle, yin tang, all you need to do is, uh, as opposed to using your 25mm needles, you're just going to use your shorter needles, which is going to be your um, 13 or your 10mm needles. Quite fine, shorter, and they can actually go into those points and stimulate. Um, you don't have to go deep into those points. I also, in some cases, utilise your do 26, which is just below here. And I find those points will help to clear my nasals, It'll help with your itchy eyes, but more, infect, uh, more effectively is going to be the one on your hand and also the ones in your leg, <clears throat> which will address um, more the underlying causes. So these will help more symptomatically, but what you want is more of a long term and this will have more of a central response as well. So if you look, bend your arm and what you're basically going to do is to look to the crease here. So just at the end of the elbow crease is what you call large intestine 11. Again, you can either needle that or what you're going to basically do is to utilize finger pressure. And all you're mainly going to do is to come to the end of the elbow crease and use finger pressure onto that. Make sure you do both sides. And again, you're going to spend a minute doing that, or at least a minute. And then what you're going to basically do is to change and then do the opposite side. Okay, so make sure you've got firm enough pressure. Those of you who's got weaker hands, you can put, what you can actually do is put one hand, finger, index finger, with the other finger on top, and stimulate. So now you've got a little bit more pressure coming into there. Yeah, so pressure-wise, that you're actually applying, and what you should feel is more of a dull but pleasant ache. Yeah, so don't apply it too much that it's causing too much discomfort, but you should get a dull but a pleasant pain or an ache as you're actually doing that um, pressure into there. Now, the other two very important points is in the lower limb. Now, when a 
significant important point is going to be spleen 10. So that is one which has more of a direct effect on the actual hormonal system and also it will also have an effect directly on your immune. So large intestine 11 that we did earlier, that's an immune enhancing point. And it's, uh, again, it will affect the um, immune system. Whereas your spleen 10 is quite an effective point, particularly for uh, treating allergic reactions. So that is one point you definitely need to be utilizing. So here, what you're gonna basically find is find the patella. So I've got my finger both sides at the top of my patella, and there's the bottom of my patella. So I'll come to the medial side of my patella, and I'm gonna do two fingers, two fingers up from the medial side of my patella is gonna put, so that's the medial side, two fingers up, is gonna put me round about here. Then what I'm gonna do is to just palpate until I feel a little indentation. And then I'm gonna utilize my thumb. I can always use another thumb on top and stimulate. And again, you're gonna get this dull, achy type pain. Um, that's actually going to come into there. And again, you're gonna stimulate that, as I said, for a minute. You can do both sides at the same time, if you wish, and then just stimulate, okay? So that's your spleen 10. Um, and it's your point for treating more allergies. Now, what we'll actually come on to now is your spleen 6. Now, quite a good point, very effective point is going to be your spleen 6. And then we'll come on to your stomach 36. So your spleen 6, if you put your leg up, you find the highest point of your myeloli. Put your fingers or your hands on top of that. And then what you're gonna do is come back from there and just glide. And you're gonna find the edge, inner edge or the posterior edge of the tibia. That is where your spleen six is going to be, okay? Just behind it and you can stimulate into that. Again, you can put two fingers on top and you're just gonna stimulate into that and get some good stimulation coming into there, okay? You do that again for a minute and then you do the other side. Then you're gonna change from that and you're gonna come onto your stomach 36. So stomach 36, I'm going to bottom of my patella. So that's where I'm going to be, is at the bottom of my patella. And then once I've actually come to the bottom of my patella, I'm going to come round to the side and find my shin. I've got my fingers there, so I can start to come away from that. And this is going to be my stomach 36. Okay. And then again, I'm going to stimulate. So it's a centimeter from the edge of the inner side of my shin. Or should I say the outer side of my shin. I'm just gonna stimulate into there for a minute. So that's my stomach 36. Now, with regards to spleen six and stomach 36, quite important points, very important points. As we said beforehand, the manner in which those two points function is primarily by changing your macrophages from type one to type two. So that makes them from being macrophages type one, which is pro-inflammatory, to type two, which is pro-anti-inflammatory. It also affects more the iglobulin and interleukins, or the cytokines in the um, circulation which is mainly associated with inflammation, so it tends to suppress that. So therefore, it's reducing the overall inflammatory reaction. And that's pretty much um, your stomach 36 and your spleen 6. So therefore, those two points are gonna be very important is utilizing those more of a long-term effect. Ideally, those of you who do suffer from allergic rhinitis, whether it's hay, a hay fever um, and it's seasonal, so in other words, if it's tree pollen, and um, uh, grass, they come at different times of the year. So tree pollen is more springtime, grass is pretty much right the way throughout, but mainly summer throughout to the end of the year. Now, in that basis, is try and start your treatment before your symptoms start to come on. Therefore, it's gonna significantly 
um, reduce your symptoms. So as you can see myself at the moment, generally if I wasn't applying these points right now, I would be coughing, sneezing. Uh, where I've done my points this morning and I do it on a daily basis. The important thing is when you're feeling better uh, and you're going to have your good days where you don't have any symptoms at all, still continue to stimulate. Your pollen count goes up and down on a daily basis. Um, where I've had pollen counts where it's been high, I found my eyes stop itching, my nose stop running. I'm not sneezing. I'm not going into that frenzy sneezing. Those of you who have um, allergic rhinitis will know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll go into this sneezing frenzy um, where you're starting to break into a cold sweat. It will eliminate that. Scratching of the eyes, it will eliminate that as well. So you're getting this red sore scratching. The more you itch it, the better it feels. It will eliminate that as well. So what I'm saying is it is very effective. I find it very beneficial. My wife keeps saying, shall I go and get you some antihistamine? I keep saying to her, no, I'm just going to stop my points. I must admit, I'm pretty bad. I always leave it until the last minute before I start. But however, I respond very well to acupressure. If you've got any questions at all, then best thing to do is drop me an email, info at stevebaileyacupuncture.com. I'll be more than happy to hear from you and pass on any other additional advice um, that may well be required. So they're your main points for addressing your allergic rhinitis, uh, regardless whether it's from cat um, or pet, um, dang, or whether it's actually from dust mites or anything such as that, as well as um, your hay fever.